And we're back. Hey, welcome back. Uh, that's John Galloway. I'm um, um, Christopher Harrison. Yes. Yes, I read it off the slide. I, oh, that's, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's okay. I'm, <laughs> yeah, forgettable. Um, in any event. <laughs> I hope you had a good break. I sure yeah, did. Got I sure did. Coffee. Yep. Um, so we are, we just finished our introduction to Bootstrap. Yep. And don't worry if you, if it didn't all make sense, it was very fast, it was kind of a, it was the quick, quick infomercial version. Exactly, right? yeah. Um, so we showed... Now we're going to give the full infomercial version. Exactly. <laughs> so, and really out of that first session, hopefully people saw, you know, it's built into ASP.NET, uh, the latest ASP.NET templates, worked mm -hmm. great with Visual Studio. Uh, we showed you some of the reasons why you should care about Bootstrap, yep. great for uh, responsive design, uh, nice themable uh, you know, design, nice separation of your, your uh, CSS, so all your kind of design stuff is in your CSS. And one of the things we showed off there was components. So right. the idea of components as all those little widgets that you need to build into your site. And, uh, you know, so th things like, uh, it says here over a dozen, I think it's a lot more than that actually, but mm -hmm. um, reusable components. So iconography, drop downs, input groups, navigation alerts, blah, 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 quite a bit more. Yep. Um, so why would you use these? Well, number one is they generally look good. And if you just use the HTML primitives, uh, number one, they don't have things like <laughs> split drop-down buttons or you know, kind of fancy navigation nav bars or things like that. And number two, they don't look good. <laughs> <laughs> they look really bad. They also look different on different browsers, right? So it kind of might look good on your browser and then someone's like, what just threw up on my browser? You yep. know, and it's, well, it's because of that. Number two, like I said, is themable. So you noticed as I was running before, uh, when I went through and you know I kind of flipped through my, um, you know I, I run my app and then I I change my theme, mm -hmm. everything changes, including you know things like the buttons. So when I when I had that kind of one that had square things, all the buttons immediately got yep. you know got. Square. By uh, the way, just yeah. to highlight real quickly on that uh, on that themable, uh, yeah. one of the questions that came through on the um, uh, on the chat window was, well, I downloaded and updated the min CSS file, and my theme was updated. Why didn't I have to update the Bootstrap CSS? Yeah. The reason is, um, and this is the, the naming convention between um, Bootstrap CSS and Bootstrap Min CSS, and you see this pretty much everywhere, is that the Min version is the minified version. And in fact, here, let's um, uh, just sort of do it real quick here. Um, that if I go into Bootstrap CSS and I open that up, what you're going to notice is that that's nice and readable. Mm -hmm. that I can actually scroll through, I can see what's going on, I've got line breaks, I've got tabbing, mm -hmm. away you go. If I open up the min version, however, you're gonna notice, if I scroll on past the, uh, the, the comments there, that um, there it all is in one line. See, that's it. No Bootstrap, comments, it's just no, no. one line of CSS. That's, yeah. that's, 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 that's <laughs> all that you need. Yeah, exactly. So if you're looking to go in and start modifying or tweaking things on your own, you're going to want the full-blown Bootstrap CSS. Uh, but what you include inside of your pages is that minified version. Yeah. Because the minified version isn't easy for us as humans to read, but browsers have no problem whatsoever with it. That's why if you just update the min, it will automatically update your theme because that's what is being referenced. Right. And and just to pull a little bit more into that or dig deeper into that is the reason that that's being referenced is if here I go into bundling, this is my bundle config, mm -hmm. and if I look at this and I scroll down and look for Bootstrap, uh, you'll see here, let me see, where is Bootstrap? I think it's just pulling in the CSS. And the reason that, that it pulls in the min one is actually the way that uh, that uh, so here, it would normally just pull in Bootstrap CSS, but because of optimization, it's going to look for a .min.css first. So if that exists, it's going to pull that one in. So this, if I had switched this enable optimizations to false, then it would have gotten bootstrap.css. Yep. So that's kind of way deeper than you need to know about, but that's where the magic is happening. Okay, uh, so we talked about they look good, they're themable. Here's an important thing is it's a replacement for HTML server controls. So if you are, if you have been doing web forms development for a long time and you're saying, you know, where is my progress bar control or where is my, you know, or where's my label control, right. that kind of thing. Uh, 
these are, are really kind of great HTML, modern web-focused version of that. So instead of generating HTML on the server that's going to you know, show a progress bar or something, instead we are just using you know, modern standard HTML and we're inserting values into that from the server, but all that markup is on the client. So this is a great, you know, if, if you're using a lot of uh, server controls, I recommend looking into kind of moving those towards, towards Bootstrap instead. And it, it, one good reason for that is because it's really great for AJAX and single page applications. So, you know, once you've got these uh, HTML based controls, you're not tied to doing everything on the server. Instead, you are able to push content across using uh, an API and, mm -hmm. and displaying that using AJAX and single page applications. All right, so here's the slide that I showed from the, uh, the first session. You know, here's kind of a just grab bag of components. Now, I'll show you where I got that. And again, we're just gonna continue to point you to the Bootstrap site. So if I go to getbootstrap.com, and then I click on this components uh, tab here. So this is kind of a, you know, here's the shopping cart. This is everything you get, right? So um, we've got things like glyph icons. Uh, these glyph icons are these, you know, icons. These are available as part of this, uh, this glyph icons uh, site. So you can go to glyphicons.com. Mm -hmm. And these are actually, these are licensed Creative Commons by attribution. So you really should put a link in the footer saying using glyph icon or you know using uh, glyph icons and linking to it. If you want more additional, if you like these icons and you want more, of course they'll sell you more and they'll sell you <laughs> high quality ones and and the PSDs for them and everything, right? So so that's great. These are icons, um, so that so that's you know um, that's a nice thing to them. They scale well. Um, so you can just go through here. We have gone through and we've picked kind of a, you know, some of the top ones. And we tried to put them together in a way that makes sense. Instead of just saying, here are 35 different uh, components, we're kind of splitting them up into some man manageable chunks. Some ones you really should know about. So one is grouping, ways to kind of group things together on the screen. Mm -hmm. And that's something HTML doesn't really have a whole lot of. I mean, there's divs, but divs are just kind of a, a square, right? And so nope. there, there isn't, you know, there aren't a lot of kind of simple ways to group things together. So we'll look at that. Another one that we kind of ambiguously titled objects is things like glyph icons and buttons, things like that. And then finally, navigation, ways to get around between things. Um, so first of all, in grouping, uh, so one thing is this jumbotron. And that's, you know, it's kind of a, a, a funny name, I think, but that's this top section <laughs> of, your, of your site, right? So that is, if, if I go in here, that's this thing here. It's very, very common nowadays when you go to pretty much any site, there's going to be a welcome to our site, here's why you should care. Yes. You know, big friendly letters and probably a button on there. So this is your Jumbotron. And so that, uh, that is that one. Uh, secondly, we've got uh, panels or excuse me, uh, labels. So labels are common for, you know, you want to identify something. Uh, so if we look at labels, here's, you know, here's our example labels. So <laughs> it's really just kind of a way that you can say, um, you know, this is new, right? So this is, this is a way of kind of slapping some, some information on something. This is also something you, you might want to do. So you might want to say, you know, Warning, danger, you know, <laughs> things are good, things are bad, draw people's attention places. Right. right. So that's another one we'll look at. And then finally is panels. And panels a way of kind of grouping things together again. So if you want to say, you know, uh, everything in this section is related, this is how it all kind of fits together, maybe mm -hmm. put a title at the top of it. Yep. Right. So what we're going to be doing for, for demos for this is we're actually just going to, I'm going to take my site and I'm going to throw some of these in there. Perfect. We'll just talk about them. Love it. I also have another, um, I have a completed one, uh, either if I mess things up, and then also just to distribute so that you can kind of look through and they'll make a little more sense. Um, and those that shows kind of all these put together. So one uh, trick that I want to show off that I'm going to be taking advantage of during this, I'm going to be using an extension. Now, I'm going to show you some of the, uh, all of these extensions later. But one that I want to show you that I have installed is this Bootstrap Snippet Pack. You don't have to use this at all, um, but this is, this is a, a nice Visual Studio extension. 
And so I've just gone out to, uh, you know, you can find bootstrap snippet pack. And this will take us to visualstudio.com. Uh, Visual Studio Gallery. .msn .microsoft .com. <laughs> um, but this is a this is a tiny little you know very quick install, um, and the source code's available also, which is nice. So you can go in and see exactly how they're made. Make your own. Um, so so that is nice. You can also find it in Visual Studio, in the extensions. If you just go to online and search for Bootstrap. And one thing just to be aware of, this is one place where if you're using Express, you can't install all these extensions. So that is one reason you know you may want to upgrade to a different version. You don't need to use these, but they're handy, right? So these are some that I've got installed. Bootstrap Snippet Pack is one of those. Mm -hmm. So let's go in. Now you saw I can always go in for any of these, and I can just copy and paste the HTML in. Um, but I want to instead, I'm, let me see, we're going to start with uh, grouping, and we wanted to look at the Jumbotron. So you can see here's an example of it. Uh, I'll throw another one in just for fun. So uh, we'll see with two, um, two of those. So I can, once I've got that snippet thing installed, I can say insert. So let me see, insert snippet, and then I'll say bootstrap. And then I want a Jumbotron. So I'll just scroll down in here and I'll say I want a Jumbotron. So that's really all there is to it. So we've got the div, and this is a very common pattern. You'll just see, you know, the, the container is mm -hmm. going to have the class. So that's containing it. And then inside that, I've got an H1. I don't need to put anything special on that. So really, all that you did there was you just added in that little container div class. Mm -hmm. Or I, I should say, use the snippet. Yeah. It had the container div class, and it had the uh, class set to jumbotron, and that's what's giving you that that jumbotron UI. Yeah. And then inside of there, you can just put in whatever it is that you want. So if you wanted a form inside of there, yeah. or a button inside of there, or an image, or or really, you know, stream of video, whatever right. it is that you might want, you can do whatever you want inside of there. There's nothing really special about that. And that, that's a really key point. So you can nest these things. You can put them mm -hmm. together. This isn't, this isn't, uh, this is standard HTML here. Excellent. OK. So, and, and this is taking advantage of CSS, the cascading style sheet. So what this is saying is everything inside of here, if, if there's an H1 inside of a class of Jumbotron, that's going to inherit that, uh, that styling. OK. So, uh, so that's, that says Jumbotron heading. Uh, so now I'm going to go in and uh, refresh this here. So there's my second Jumbotron. Notice the second one didn't have a button. And then I'm just going to, you know, for the sake of, I'm going a little more detail for this one just uh, as we're, you know, getting started on it. But so if I click on that, I'll see here that, okay, so this H1. You know, if, if you're good with CSS, you know, this will hopefully make some sense there. <laughs> so what this is saying is dot jumbotron, and then there's an H1 inside of a jumbotron, and because of that reason, it's font font size 63 pixels. So okay. it weigh it up. So so the dot, just for the, anybody who's not familiar with CSS, is for a class. class. Exactly. Okay. And a class is a type of control that gives you the ability to flag all sorts of different controls as a particular type. Yep. And a common pattern you'll see here is that they use div classes. Yep. So there's some, you know, we got some questions on here. Um, somebody was saying, why are the nav not using, you know, nav, why are they div class equals nav? Because there is an HTML nav tag. I'll talk about that more in my last session towards the end of the day. Mm -hmm. But the real idea is they want, they don't want you to say, oh no, I need to go in and change all my markup in order for things to work. You just slap classes in. So there's a lot of places where for reuse and for you know, making it easy to kind of move things around, generally you'll see a lot of divs with classes. All right, so there's that one. Uh, so there's my Jumbotron. Uh, another one that we want to look at is a label. Labels are really nice and, and kind of one of my first introductions to, uh, to Bootstrap. I was working on an open source project. There was uh -huh. this ambitious group of, of, of friends that put together this thing called Code 52. And okay. they wanted to do a new open source project every single week for a year. 
Okay. And I think it lasted a couple of months, which was still a huge effort. Right, um, absolutely. <laughs> but so we created a site and somebody said, let's use Bootstrap on this. And I was like, what is the point? And it was amazing to see how quickly things came together. Mm -hmm. So one nice thing was uh, we had, it was kind of a tracking site and we wanted to be able to have, um, you could put in different things and it would show status for them. If something was you know, accepted or rejected mm -hmm. or that kind of thing. So if I go in here and I say I would like a label, uh, then I can go in and I can say, now here's label default. And I could also say, instead of label default, I may want something like danger, or success, info, or, six, or, or primary. So I'm gonna say, you know, hooray. Right, so I'm gonna do two of those. So I'll do one label after that, and then I'm going to do another one after it and we'll give it some danger. So, uh, and the, the, the real danger here, here is because we're repeating ourselves and we shouldn't do that. So we'll say instead, danger, right? <laughs> okay, so now uh, let's flip over here and fresh that. Okay, so we had this and it says hooray and then we have the next one that says danger. Um, and I could actually put these spans, um, the more common thing you'll see is to move that you know, inside. These labels generally you'll see hanging out at the end of content, right? So here I'm gonna move this one as well. Put that in, okay. And so then we'll hop over here and refresh. There we go. Uh, so that says hooray and actually this one I'll change that to say Danger. Okay. And there we go. Okay, so those are labels. And this is, again, this is just something very quick that you can put in to, uh, yep. to indicate how things fit together, right? Uh, one other thing I want to show here is panels. And so I'm going to put these guys here inside of a panel. Um, so to do that, I'm going to go down and uh, there's a lot of different options that you have for panels here. There's basic, all the way up through, you know, including tables, including list groups. Um, so all kinds of, of stuff we could do. Um, so, and including things like footers, which is nice. So here I'm going to go in and I'm create a, uh, create one. So I'm gonna control KX is another way to bring up snippets. Bootstrap, and I want a panel. Okay, so now I'm going to say, you know, a list of things. And I don't want this lorem, well, I guess a little lorem ipsum's okay, but I wanna move these. Yay, lorem ipsum. <laughs> now we were looking earlier at a lot of different lorem ipsum alternatives out there. There are quite a few. <laughs> um, I think you'll be showcasing another one. A I'll be bit later. showcasing one of my favorites, yep. So there I put a, uh, so here we've got a jumbotron. Inside okay. of it is a panel. Yep. And then inside of that panel, we've got some, some lists of things and those have labels. So this is, we're doing a few things here. One is we wanna show how quick and simple it is to use these components. Right, we just show, added on classes. Yep, we wanna show nesting them together, moving things around like that. Right. And, and show that you can, you know, kind of quickly compose things, put, yep. put together something pretty, pretty uh, quick. So that is, and, and also uh, out of that too, just kind of like the general flow. Mm -hmm. if I can find something on this page, and then I can say, here's how I would like it to work, and then I can just go in and start tweaking, tweaking those classes and adding them on. Yep. All right. So that's, that's it for a quick look at grouping. By the way, um, somebody asked a real quick question, um, just since you're currently driving, yeah. um, if you want to fire back up Visual Studio, yes. show off where the snippet menu was. Uh, okay, so there are a few ways to bring that up. One is I right click and say insert snippet, Yep. and then it's got this list. There are a lot of great snippets built in. There's things in here like HTML, I could do an audio tag or something, Yep. Um, but I can also instead do a bootstrap now this is because I've installed that bootstrap template pack. right and do make sure that you go grab that yep yep and then that's all there is to it so so right click insert snippet another yep. is control K X yeah and you have to hold down control that entire time so control K control X yep. and that will bring it up and one real nice thing is that since your fingers are already on the keyboard when you go control K control X you can just type bootstrap enter and then go find the one that you want yep 
And then I think it also hangs out somewhere in here, although I can never seem to find it. It's, it is also in one of these menus, but, but and I'm, I'm happy to just right click and insert snippet. Yep. Um, so there it is. <laughs> Yep. And a couple of people are saying that they can't find it in NuGet. Um, and I just want to mention that it's not in, in NuGet, that if you go to Tools and then the Extensions uh, Updates, point. you'll be able to find it under there. So just real quick, Tools, Extension Updates, and then if you click Online, yep, there we go, yeah. um, and then hit Online, and then just do a search inside of there for Bootstrap. Wow, I'm, I'm demoing without even having to do anything. Yeah, I love yeah, this. I'm the code monkey. <laughs> this is actually, the, you, you're bringing I've always up wanted some, a code monkey. <laughs> you are bringing up some really important things. So one is these two dialogues, the NuGet dialogue and the tools dialogue, yep. are sim similar. Mm -hmm. So NuGet is used for adding something to a project. Right. So this is if I want to add in some, some DLLs or some libraries or whatever to just this project. Exactly. If I want to ins extend Visual Studio, if I want to change the way Visual Studio works for everything. That's tools and then extensions and updates. Tools, extensions, and updates. Or another way I could do that is I could say extensions. I love that little search feature up at the very yep. top. Yeah. So I, I clicked in that search and I typed the word extensions. Yep. And then I hit, oops, I'll do it again. All right, and then this is also really important. Just since you bring it up, this is a very oh, yeah. common common uh, thing. People, there is an installed. If you search for Bootstrap <laughs> under installed and you haven't installed any, you're not going to find these. Right, right. right. You got to click in online. Yep. And then one other cool feature is this updates. What's nice here is it'll go through. Now I'm I'm a good developer. I'm all up to date. But over time. <laughs> <laughs> You're better than I am. I'll admit it. <laughs> I'm a little obsessive about it. But over time, they'll come out with new uh, updates for it. Maybe the snippet pack, mm -hmm. they add in some new ones. Um, then you'll see those updates there. So it's a nice kind of way to update. Awesome. Those. By the way, do me a favor. Bring that screen up um, uh, yep. one last time. Oh, I, w I will. So I'm going to hit uh, extensions. Yep. Yep. Um, and then just go to online and just do a real quick search for, for Bootstrap. Um, so a lot of people are asking about, um, in particular, Calendar, or uh, they're asking about really fill in JavaScript library here um, that I've seen questions about Kendo, about Knockout, about um, Angular, um, about jQuery. And there's a couple of things that are worth highlighting. Number one is the reason that I had John go back to those updates is that you'll notice that, again, we're not launching rockets here, you know, that other people have already run into this, and quite frequently people are nice enough to create a project that you could go off and uh, and download. Mm -hmm. So if you go check out those updates, you'll be able to find different plugins that are available. Now remember, those uh, extensions are for all of Visual Studio, and there's also going to be NuGet packages as well yep. that, um, uh, that could help you out. Which leads me into my next big point, which is Bootstrap and fill in the blank, jQuery jQuery UI, um, uh, Knockout, Modernizer, um, and, and whatever other library it is that somebody else can think of that I'm just not thinking of right now, none of these are mutually exclusive. Mm -hmm. That all of these are, are going to be tools in your toolbox. There's an old saying that if the only tool that you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. That's a problem because, as we all know, not everything is a nail. So you want to make sure that you do have multiple tools that are available. So if you like doing Knockout, if you like doing Angular, you can still do that with Bootstrap, that they're not mutually exclusive. Mm -hmm. um, so, so always keep that in mind. Now, the only place where you may run into some sort of conflict is if you are using another library that depends on some of these class names. Right, right absolutely. So, and, and I don't know offhand, I was trying to think, because I saw that question come in about jQuery UI earlier. Yeah. And I'm not aware of any conflicts, you know, but if there was, say, for instance, a jQuery UI panel, yep. and it's depending on that class name, you may run into some sort of conflict. One interesting way of solving that that we looked at earlier, we were looking at the other day, was Yelp.com. Yep. And we noticed in there the way that they, they're using Bootstrap. Yep. Um, and when uh, it's customized version there, right? Customized. Yes. Exactly. And, and so if we look at this, this, uh, this is fascinating here. Fascinating for people who think uh, HTML <laughs> class names are, are fascinating. <laughs> But here they have Y this button. It's a very small subset of the population. <laughs> so there they have Y button, Y primary. So they have prefixed all the bootstrap classes right. with a Y. Yep. 
And that's that's actually relatively easy to do using less or using you know a different build process. Exactly. And that and by doing that, then that probably deconflicts things so that they can use other libraries and they're not going to conflict in any way. So great questions. Let's before I look at this and get hungry. Uh, I am going to <laughs> skip back over here. So we have... I'm actually a little disappointed that you didn't go in and do a real quick search for <laughs> spaghetti places. That's true. <laughs> All right, and it's too early. Maybe lunchtime. Yes. Okay, let's go for objects. Yay, objects. So we're going to look at glyph icons, dropdowns, and buttons. And again, this is just a very quick sampling. There are tons and tons of them. Yep. We're really not trying to make you an expert on any of these specific uh, components, Yep. and we're not trying to cover all the components. We're trying to give a feel for how to put them to use. Exactly, yeah. If we tried to sit here and cover every single component, we'd be here well past lunchtime, yes. and, and John would that miss out on his well. spaghetti. So glyph icons, as I was saying earlier, there was a time, I, I actually learned this from Damian Edwards, he was describing it, he's like, he's like, there was that time where you found that one icon, that was that was a lot of work. That yep. was, and and so these, are, these icons are great. These are uh, Creative Commons by attribution license. They are um, very simple to use. And so here's, here's kind of a, a quick you know, screenshot off of the site. Um, and so, uh, so those are you know, very, very convenient. Also, because these are implemented as icons, um, they are scalable. So you can take any of these and you could display them in your Jumbotron enormous size and they'll still work. Mm -hmm. Um, buttons. So buttons are, you know, we, we've seen a lot of buttons already on here so yes. far. So here's, here's an example of a button. Here's another example of a button. Now notice these are styled differently, right? So this, this one is just kind of plain and boring white. Um, this one up here is screaming for your attention. <laughs> and, and, ah! and the difference between those is uh, just based on styling. So here, that button up at the top has these styles here. It has button, button primary, button large. So just to highlight real quickly here, because I know you're going to talk about those classes momentarily, mm -hmm. that this is just a regular button. That yes. again, just a regular button, we just added on the tags. Yeah, well, even... Or added on the classes, rather. Exactly. And yep. even a little bit more, maybe terrifying for some HTML purists, these are not even technically buttons. They're A tags with that class. So, yep. and this is part of the, um, you know, this, I'll be honest, this was one thing that kind of freaked me out about mm -hmm. Bootstrap for a while, and I've kind of come to terms with it now, is they don't want you to say, okay, you need to go change your HTML. If you want to use our button classes, you need to change to a button or input that right. will submit or any of that. It's just, you can, you could take a tag, you could take a div, you know, you can just, and then it's the class that makes it light up. Exactly. So. Yep. So there's that one. So we no uh, notice again there, I said this one is button, button primary, button large. This one down here, if we look at some of these buttons, these are button, button default. So both of these have that button on them. So that's what makes it a button. And then it needs another class to set what the style is, what type of button. Yep. So, and, and like any of these, we can go into this uh, the style gallery. So if I go to buttons, uh, where are we at for buttons? Button groups. Um, I think actually, if I if I um, there's my button drop downs. I think I need to go to just getting started, and there's some examples there. Um, what I'm going to do though, that's more fun, is just actually uh, show you some buttons. And here, so here's here's this nice slide um, that you nicely put together for me. So the example here, <laughs> again, you have the button to make something a button, and then button modifier to change to select what the look is. And both of those classes are required. Yes. You need BTN and you need BTN modifier, which if I can go back and make one more pitch for that bootstrap snippets, um, if, if, if I do have one little complaint about, about Bootstrap, and I, and I do love Bootstrap, and I want to make that very clear, because it makes it so that even I, non-graphics artist, can put together pages that, that look very good. Mm -hmm. um, if there's one little complaint that I have about it, it's the fact that a lot of times it's combo classes that, uh, that are needed. And so having those snippets there makes it that much easier because I can then just go in and say, all right, well, I want this uh, you know, particular button or whatever it is that you might want, and it will automatically have all of those classes for you. So definitely take advantage of, uh, of those snippets. Yep. 
All right, so we're gonna look at glyph icons, buttons, and dropdowns. So I'm going to continue to just um, uglify this page that I've been working on. Um, and then I've got a nice kind of uh, a simpler sample at the end, so both of these I'll add. By the way, we had somebody ask earlier, you know, I, I just cloned the repository, I don't see all the code. This is, this is a work in progress, so we have, during the day we're gonna be pushing stuff up there. Yep. At the end of the sessions, we'll, we'll grab the, the code and put it up there. So let's start with glyph icons, all right? So inside of this, I would like to use a glyph icon. So I can first, uh, I'm doing Control KX, insert snippet, bootstrap, and then I, I um, will say I would like a glyph icon. Okay. okay, so it's putting in this default info sign. And if we go over here and look at this, Take a look in our components. And then up at the top, it's gonna to show my glyph icons. And all right, so here's, here's the examples. For all of these, you need two things. You need glyph icon and then the type. So very similar to that button style we talked about. Mm -hmm. One thing to say, here's the type it is. And then two, to pick this specific one. So I am right now thinking that I would love to put on a calendar. I okay, would so, love to put on a calendar. Exactly. Uh, actually, I want a, a calendar, but this other one just caught my eye, which is the thumbs up. Uh, so I'm going to do both of those. So I'm going to say calendar. So here, again, taking advantage of Visual Studio. There's that. And now I can just copy and paste. And we'll do another one. And this one is a thumbs up. Thumbs up. All right. So, um, so let's take a look over here at our page. We'll refresh that. So there is my thumbs up. I did not get my calendar. So let's see what I did wrong there. The glyph icon, glyph icon calendar. Okay. The plot is thickening. I'm not sure where it is. Let's look. Let's inspect element and see the one before it. So, so there's that one, glyph icon, glyph icon calendar. I'm actually not seeing why it's not there. So I have another one here where I have uh, done well, that previously. We, we, we knew it was gonna happen. It's <laughs> there we go. a matter of time, we, we talked about it. Let's make sure if the, um, yeah. So I'm just gonna copy those in case there's a spelling error of some weird sorts. No, that, yeah. Yep, okay. Cool. One, one other thing I wanna do, just I'm, I'm uh, not gonna obsess about this, but I am kinda having fun with this. These are relatively <laughs> simple. They're just uh, HTML and CSS, so I feel relatively comfortable here and I like to tinker. Okay, I'm not seeing that calendar. It's possible that that class name. There's something wrong with that. Um, so, th but that's generally the the way you do that. Now, let's say that that thumbs up is too small because it is too small. And it instead, is too small. Um, so I'm going to move that up into the header. By the way, if anyone in the chat uh, noticed something, notice why that wasn't working. Feel free to tell me. I'm going to cut this. And I want to move this way up. I'm going to get rid of the main Jumbotron. Oh, uh, Brian says it's white on white. Oh, that's funny. That would make sense. Um, it's interesting that this one does show. Um, but yeah, so let's, let's uh, take him up on that. Let's move that calendar up into the Jumbotron heading area. So that's going to be up above the panel. So I'm going to go here. So there's that one. And then let's, let's move that calendar. Get that up there as well. Okay, we're having fun here. So there's that. I'm I'm still not seeing that one. Um, I, I do want to move that thumbs up into the header because that is going to be more fun. So I'm going to put that there. Okay. So we should there. So this is a good way to welcome visitors to your site. Put that thumbs up right in the head. Thumbs up. Okay. So that's that's what I want to show with that glyph icons. Uh, it's they're great to use. You can use them, you know, all over the place. 
not just, you know, you don't just have to drop them somewhere. You can kind of put them wherever. Also, they scale well. Um, so here I'm zooming the page way in, and that is not an image, and it's not going to, you know, um, it's not going to look bad on any screen size. That is always going to be a wonderful thumbs up for us. All right, so now let's go to buttons. So uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop over in here, and let's put a button down at the bottom of this. So if I wanted to control KX, what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to insert a button, and then I'm going to break it. Okay, so if I go in and say, actually, there's, they have a lot of different ones. Yep. Um, so I'm going to put that in and then uh, simplify it way down. So here, I've got a button default. I guess it doesn't hurt to have. Yeah, we'll just do one. Okay, so there, and this says hello. All right. So there's my button. Now, that's going to look better outside of that panel. And then here's where I can go in and start kind of messing with how I want it to look. That is a default button. And uh, I want to get more attention for it. So I could go in and change that to another button class. So here if I say button danger, and then that's going to get it a little more attention, right? But then if I want even more attention for it, I can say button large, right? Mm -hmm. So there, that's, that's going to make it a big dangerous button. All right. Now, nothing is hooked up to this. There's no, that, that link doesn't go anywhere. That's, that is just a, uh, and in fact here, another great thing. Previously, we saw that that button um, was an A tag. Mm -hmm. This one is a button. Either works. All that sets the style here is these classes. And that is maximum zoom. Okay, so there we have that button. Now, one other thing, just because we are enjoying our thumbs up. I'm gonna <laughs> copy that thumbs up, and I'm going to put that inside of the button. We need a spaghetti glyph icon. <laughs> That's true. Uh, I'll see what I can do. Okay, so there it's dangerous, but there is a dangerous thumbs up. And let's look at the way I promised I was going to break it. So let's go in here and take out that button class. Now that, that should still work, right? I mean, because that should be enough for Bootstrap to figure that out. And in fact, no, that is not going to work. Did I save it? Now you will get some styling sometimes, but it's not, it's not right. There's, that's like a weird button. That is a browser rendered button. And if I mouse over this. And this is a big key here. Yeah. So this says, when you're using button danger, you must also specify the class button. Okay. So I go in there and I say btn, save it, that goes away. I got that, oops, I got that um, indication because of Web Essentials. Web Essentials, again, is a free extension. It installs on any, uh, any version of Visual Studio, including the free Express version. If, if you're a web developer, just get it. In fact, stop listening to me talking and just go to vswebessentials.com, click on download. It's free. There's also a version on here for, uh, for Visual Studio 2012. Um, so um, just a really handy thing. Just go get it. Get it. Yep. So, and, and frequent updates, including here, this shows all the stuff that's been added for Visual Studio 2012. Mm -hmm. um, so you need it. Okay, so there we did a button. Uh, it's a button with a thumbs up. Okay, uh, so there we've looked at uh, glyph icons, buttons, and drop downs. One other, so drop downs is where we start kind of getting into things that are composed a bit. So here I'm going to do, uh, so control KX, and I'm going to do a button drop down. And so this is something where to do this kind of stuff with HTML and CSS, a lot of things you know, that we saw so far are handy, they saved us some time, but it's something where you could mess around with for a while. This is where it starts to get to be, you know, this would take a while more to put together, okay? So this is a button drop down, and then it has all the separators and things are highlighted and everything looks kind of nice, all right? Um, so that is that. There are also support for 
a lot of other kind of advanced buttons, and I think we'll look at those in a little bit. Okay, so uh, there we are. I, I was right. <laughs> so we have support for additional other kinds of buttons. Um, so we looked at, at those kind of groupings. Um, so if I go in, and I believe we have one other snippet here. Yeah, because you know the default radio buttons are, are kind of boring. You know why they're called radio buttons, by the way? I do actually, but go ahead. Um, for, for, for those of us that, that remember the old style car radios, you push in one button and all the other ones pop out. So the radio buttons, because you can only select one. Yep. True story. That's true. Yep. Does anyone remember? Do, I remember doing that. I, 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 and, and in order to set it, you pulled it out uh, to yeah. set your favorites. Yeah, you That's pulled right. it out instead. <laughs> I forgot yeah. about that. All that we're going to do is just date ourselves. That's here. true. Just show our age. <laughs> I remember when I, <laughs> when I was your age. <laughs> So we didn't have IntelliSense. <laughs> I'm done now. <laughs> we used Visual Notepad. We used Edlin, and we liked it. I actually used a Visual Punch Card. No, I'm kidding. I didn't do that. <laughs> okay, so here, uh, <laughs> VisualPunchCard.net. The, <laughs> the nice thing here is that you know we can take these simple buttons, and then there's these support for button groups. And here I've got a button toolbar with a button group with buttons inside of it. So here I can start really building out kind of you know, more advanced kind of navigation, grouping things together and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so one other thing that we want to look at. So we, we looked at groupings, we looked at objects. Uh, I just showed you enhanced um, buttons and now we're going to look at navigation. So I kind of broke, broke these conceptually. You know, groupings is grouping stuff together. Um, objects mm -hmm. is cool stuff and then navigation is kind of getting between the cool stuff. And so navigation, we have some of the ones we'll be showing navbar, uh, breadcrumbs, and pagination. And that navbar, that is the thing up here at the top of the page. This is, um, and Christopher didn't make a huge deal out of it earlier, but you know, you have kind of the, everything's highlighting, it's got the site name and stuff. It also, when you shrink it way down, you get this kind of, mm -hmm. that cool thing, right? And that, I think that's really neat, you know, the nav bar automatically is handling that. The way it's doing that is, is kind of neat. So let's go in and take a look. This is one, I'm not going to add another nav bar. I'm just gonna show you where it's set up. So here I'm going into my shared layout. And you'll notice that there are two different groups of nav bars. This one is interesting here. This is icon bar. So this, uh, this thing at the top, when we shrink the page down, People will call this the hamburger menu. It looks like a pretty lousy hamburger to me. I would, and now maybe hamburgers if we could get a hamburger up in here. <laughs> um, but so they call that <laughs> they call that the hamburger. Yeah, there, Wait, there, there's your spaghetti. Is. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. Um, okay, so but so the, this menu here has that kind of those three bars on top of each other. So here we've got span class equals icon bar. Just to play with that here, I think I want to try and see if this works. If I throw a few of these into my page right up here in my panel. See what, I, I'm just curious, pardon my playing here. Span class equals bar, I'm not sure where I put it or even if I should have done that. Um, okay, so, but so that that is how the nav bar works. I think it's because it is, it's contextual. So those icon bars work because they are, um, they are inside this nav bar header. That, that's why they display. Um, but the important thing here is it says data toggle collapse. And so this is, that is the collapsed view of it. And then when they're expanded, this is the content in there. So if I wanted to put in, you know, um, something in here, like say, for instance, a um, uh, no, that's not what I want. I want a that thumbs up. Uh, there it is. So I can put other stuff in there again. Just this make is, it life easier. Just do a real quick copy paste. Copy, yeah. 
Yeah, and, and, and while John's doing this in the background, that really is sort of the key here, is that you can just add in whatever you want inside of there, and will automatically show up. And um, right now, there's the action links that are there. Um, yeah. And that's something that's MVC specific, that's just generating uh, an anchor tag uh, automatically for you. Right, and right. that really is the key there. It's just generating an anchor tag. There's actually nothing special about that anchor tag, mm -hmm. um, but it's the surrounding class that's taking care of, of all of that for you. That's a really important point. So if I go in here and do inspect yep. element, we'll see that that is, it's just an LI with an anchor tag. Yep. So, you know, don't get thrown off by that other stuff. That's just an anchor tag. One important thing to show off here. So I've been kind of painting outside the lines and throwing stuff where it doesn't <laughs> always necessarily belong. Yep. One example is I just threw this glyph icon up in the header. Now there is absolutely a way to get that to work. I have an example that, that I have later. I could, for instance, if I made a button, if I put a button in the header, I think that those generally work better. But just throwing stuff around here, you notice this is not even valid HTML. A span should not be inside a UL. And so it's kind of saying, what are you doing, John? And so, um, so because of that, it's not going to work. So I, I'm just kind of pointing that out for the, you know, you can, if, if things aren't working, it may be because... You can't just throw everything everywhere right. and expect yep. it all to work. Generally, you can nest things. You can move them around. Um, but here, me just kind of throwing that in there is not is not uh, the greatest idea. And probably not uh, really that great for site design anyways to have glyph icons up there. Um, okay, so we have looked at navbar, uh, breadcrumbs, and pagination. So I'll, I'll kind of do mm -hmm. those quickly, moving along here. So... Breadcrumbs, those are good up at the top of the page. Um, so I'm going to go in here. Breadcrumbs is kind of the how did I get to this page and how can I get back, right? So I'm going to go in and do Control K X. Breadcrumb. All right. So, and, um, you know, here this is home library data. Again, of course, I can make this instead say, you know, about and contact to match. Or, you know. Right. And so then this kind of gives that kind of how I got to this page. Okay. So that's here. This is this, and those are those links. All right. And then the one other thing here was the pagination. Pagination is actually really cool. So it's, it's generally kind of a pain in the neck to get good looking navigation inside, uh, pagination. Inside. Yeah. And that's, that's actually kind of what this section is here. I'm going to get rid of that. And I'm going to take advantage of something in Visual Studio where I can just group that. So there I hit, the, hit that plus minus. And I'm just going to select that whole block and delete it. And now I'm going to put in some real pagination. So I'll go bootstrap. And then it's way down towards the bottom. OK. So there is an example of pagination. Um, and so, um, it, including things like the first one, I can't go left, and so that's disabled. I'm not allowed to go before page one, right? Right. And so this is something that your server-side code is going to need to keep up to date, or JavaScript, as I get to page two and three, et cetera, right. whether or not that should be active. And, and, it, and it's worth noting here, um, just you know, kind of one more time, and it's been something that I've said a lot, which yeah. is at the end of the day, it's just adding and removing classes. That's that's mm -hmm. all that we're doing here. So if you did want to do this with a single page app, that all you need to do is just make sure that the JavaScript is adding or removing the appropriate classes, and away it goes from there. Yep. I'm going to throw that there. I'm going to go down here and get rid of this other junk at the bottom of the page. One thing that I do want to show off with this, which is cool, is notice as I go over this, because it's disabled, that's actually giving me the disabled icon, which is kind of neat. So, um, and that's, that's just built in on the browser because it's marked as disabled. Okay, so uh, uh, in wrapping up kind of, we, we've gone through, we've looked at a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. I want to show one other kind of demo that, that I put together earlier, which this was kind of just like, yeah, we're just throwing a lot of stuff together, or it may have felt that way. I also have another one where I... Um, kind of assembled these a bit more. And so this one uh, has some navigation. I'm going to be including this in the code, code uh, samples as well. 
what I did for this is I, I created on my home controller, I created views for groupings objects in nav. And then within each of these, you'll see if I go in, uh, here's my groupings. So I've got you know, a jumbotron, I've got um, panels and all that stuff. Um, and so if I run that, then you'll see, you know, as we kind of navigate through them, you'll see those examples there. And it's a little bit easier kind of to get around through those. So there's label, there's a panel, jumbotron, so there's that. Objects, I've got my glyph icons. So that's actually the one that threw me off a little bit because if I look at my objects, that's exactly what I did there. So I'm going to be digging into that <laughs> mysterious calendar. You know, what's funny is, um, is while you were doing that, um, and, and in fact, why, why don't you update your objects real quick just to update one of those to calendar. Um, yeah. but, um, uh, but it worked just fine on my system. A couple of people were wondering if maybe um, um, it was a, a version of, uh, of Bootstrap issue, if maybe you were out of date. But it looked like, at least earlier, you know what? Yeah, there's there your calendar. There That's it funny. It was just on that page. OK. Who can know? Weird. Yep. Actually, I'll try and dig into it. It, it was just one of those you know, live demo things. It worked just go. fine on mine. It was really funny. <laughs> anyway. OK, so there, yep. there we have. And then, then here's the navigation, you know, breadcrumbs, navbar. This is interesting, too, on this navbar. Here's an example of, of a button working there. So you know, it can work. And actually, for that one, I did. There's a snippet in here that will insert a, no, I don't, if I go into nav. So this is how a button up there should work. If I go toggle navigation, um, no. There is a button somewhere in this list, um, and so that's that's an example of how how that should work. Mm -hmm. uh, there it is, search. Um, so there's actually an entire form up there, and then a button button default inside a form up in the navbar. Yep. Okay, so so kind of you know wrapping things up there. So what we we did there was a whirlwind tour of yes. components. I wanted to give you an, an idea of there is a wide variety of components. Mm -hmm. There is a huge amount if you go and look. Um, if, if we can go back to my browser here real quick, I want to show uh, if we go to components, there are support for a lot of things, including like media objects. So you can do these kind of complex um, nested um, media types. There is support for components for things like um, you know wells. So wells putting something inside something else. As I showed, progress bars, um, animated progress bars, which, you know, that kind of uh, pinstripe thing going. Um, there's, um, you know, a lot of groups. Within, within media objects, there are also things for, um, uh, you know, as I mentioned, the, the grouping things. One other thing that kind of fits in with this is, um, that there's also support for images. And so that I think you'll see actually more on, on CSS, but I kind of think of these as parts, is there's also a lot of kind of um, classes that work well with components is these, these um, different image classes. Um, OK, so a huge amount of components. Uh, we've looked at kind of the common pattern here of pulling them together, really just grabbing the HTML and putting it in. I recommend this uh, bootstrap template pack for using them. Yep. And then the one thing, the one kind of glaring omission here is we have only looked at HTML up to this point. So, you know, so, some of the um, supposition is you know how to write your server side code and you're going to be putting things into this. Uh, we saw that one example here where we're using um, HTML uh, action link in order to create the, that, some of that HTML. Um, so, you know, here's where I'm going in and I'm actually rendering some of this out. We'll look more at generating some of that server-side content, but again, really here it's HTML and classes lighting up these different components. Absolutely. Yep. Great. All right. Let's take a break there. Yes, let's do that. So just like John said, that was a fantastic whirlwind tour through everything. Um, loving everything in the chat window here, doing our absolute best to try and get through every, uh, yeah. every question as we can. Um, obviously, you know, we're, we're doing a lot of other work here. Um, but in the meantime, I don't know about everybody else, um, but uh, definitely uh, could use about a 10 minute break. So yeah. what do you say we, uh, we do that? We'll see you guys back here in uh, 10 minutes and we'll talk about laying out your pages and start to answer those questions around grids. We'll see you then.